behalf of the university, I present to you have just seen some of the many sites of the university campus. One of the most important buildings is the Whitworth Hall, which was opened in 1902 on the occasion of the Jubilee of Owens College. The hall, with seating for over a thousand, is used for large gatherings and university ceremonials, such as the conferment of degrees. The degree ceremony opens with a procession, led by two students carrying wands with lictors badges. These badges were presented to the university in 1926 by Thomas Brown and Sons. The serpent is the crest of the Duke of Devonshire, the first president of Owens College. The rising sun is pure symbolism for growing enlightenment, leading to the Latin inscription Arduus ad solem, striving to the sun. An alternative northern translation might be, you don't get out, for now. The Latin inscription on the other badge is Honestas Optima Politia. Honesty is the best policy. The group following the leaders consists of representatives from the Committee of Convocation, teaching and administrative staff of the university, and heads of halls of residence. Convocation is the body of university graduates and current academic staff. A second group led by student stewards carrying wands, follows with representatives from court, the supreme governing body of the university, and senate, the academic body responsible for exams, teaching and research. Also in this group are the academics who will present the graduands for their awards. Next in the procession comes a student bearing the mace, which is made of solid silver. The main body of the head is decorated in applied gold with the arms of the university. Of the former Victoria University, Owens College Manchester, University College Liverpool and Yorkshire College Leeds, and the City of Manchester. Busy Bees, a feature of the crest of the Manchester City Arms and the double rows representing the Union of Lancaster and York, are also applied in gold. The serpent from the Duke of Devonshire's arms completes Mr Leslie Durbin's design of the mace. The mace bearer leads the vice-chancellor, or one of the pro-vice-chancellors, who is the presiding officer of the ceremony and who will present the degrees on behalf of the university. The procession is completed by the registrar, or his representative. All the students taking part in the procession are volunteers from the university student body. The ceremony closes with the Latin quotation Salva sit universitas, nostra mancuniensis, hoc precantis consugamus, which translates to, long live our University of Manchester, so saying, let us stand.
<coughs> Mr. Chancellor, honorary graduates, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this ceremony for the conferment of degrees. Today is an important day for the university. The pomp and circumstance of the ceremony is our way of making the day special for all of you, but also our way of maintaining our continuity with the past. Graduation ceremonies have been held every year, save one, since the foundation of the university, and that exception was 1940. Today, the university does itself the honor of conferring degrees honoris causa on four people who, in their own ways, have made a signal contribution to society. By becoming honorary graduates, they join our community and are thereby linked by ties of history and sentiment to those who have graduated in the past and those who will graduate in the future. We are delighted with their acceptance of our invitation. Today is also an important day for those of you who have become graduates by the more conventional route. You can be proud of what you have achieved. To obtain your degree is a fitting recognition of many years of hard work and of high academic achievement on your part. Well done. The students that we teach come from all parts of the world, and here they learn together in good fellowship. And these students will have been taught by distinguished scholars, men and women whose reputation and standing are widely acknowledged. This breadth of academic endeavor and the expertise which supports it are the very essence of what a university stands for. But there is another important idea that you should always remember. In addition to becoming a graduate of this university, you will also become a member of that international fellowship that consists of scholars in your own subject or profession. A fellowship in which the subject is more important than the nationality of those forming the fellowship, and in which differences of race, gender, or politics are unimportant. And of course, we must not forget that today is also an important day for the parents and grandparents, husbands or wives of the graduates. The university recognizes and values the support and encouragement that family and friends are able to give to the students under its charge. That is why we value these congregations so much and we are delighted that you could be our guest today. Finally, let me say to those of you who are leaving us to go your various ways that it's our hope that through the education that you've received here, not only will you have achieved personal fulfillment, but you will find yourself better able to make a contribution <coughs> to the solution of any problem that you may face in the future. Bear this in mind, as we all offer you our warmest congratulations and our best wishes for your future happiness and success. Mr. Chancellor, for most actors, the opportunity to play Hamlet comes or is aspired to after years of treading the boards 
and or facing the cameras at the summit of the career. In Mr. Barkworth's case, it was otherwise, for it was one of his first parts in major stage productions in the sixth form at Stockport School. So enthusiastic and realistic was the portrayal that when he was engaged in the most convincing sword fight with Laertes, the shouts from the audience were in Danish. And the first aid room was put on full alert. But he has been producing plays and acting in them for years before this, in the less public environment of the garage of his parents' home in Bramhall. Press ganging a little girl living a few doors away to increase the cast to more acceptable levels than one. Although she was flattered at the attention, it did not take her long to realize that her roles were consistently those of supporting rather than starring. Now, our graduate must have been, oh, fully five years old when he made up his mind definitely to make his career in the stage. And what a splendid career it has been. An early disappointment at losing a part in children's hour on account of his voice breaking <coughs> was more than compensated a few years later by his winning a scholarship to RADA. Now it appears that he thoroughly enjoyed this stimulating experience and he made such a favorable impression that he was offered a part by a theater company in Folkestone even before he had completed the course. He also performed the minor miracle of not only managing to survive, but to include at least one visit every week to the theater on two pounds, 15 shillings per week. After a short but a very busy spell in repertory in Folkestone, National Service found him, after obtaining a commission, in charge of entertainment. And apart from the times in which he was responsible for a visiting VIP being served undiluted concentrated soup and a total absence of girls at a regimental dance, he added both to his experience and his stature. He disarmingly relates that his CO said to him, the trouble with you, Barkworth, you don't stand, you drape. But in spite of this military shortcoming, he was awarded a very high grade in his report. But as he himself has said, I wasn't really a soldier, but an actor playing the part of one. After further repertory work in Sheffield, Mr. Barkworth moved to the West End Theatre and one outstanding success followed another. A woman of no importance roared like a dove. The school for scandal, crown matrimonial, donkey's years, Siegfried Sassoon, hidden laughter, the list goes on and on. Others he directed, like Night and Day, Sisterly Feelings, and The Eight O'Clock Muse. Films and television series also came in steady procession. <clears throat> and it is perhaps from these latter that he made his widest fame nationally. His great skill in representing the opposite ends of the spectrum of life was exemplified by him playing, on the one hand, the role of a most urbane banker against a backdrop awash with money and opulence in Telford's change, and on the other, a down-at-heel 
inadequately resourced senior academic in late starter. Other memorable series included The Power Game and Manhunt and Winston Churchill, The Wilderness Years. Such versatility was perhaps what Shakespeare had in mind when he wrote, to make the weeper laugh, the laugher weep. He had the dialect and different skill, catching all passions in his craft of will. No challenge seems to have been too daunting. The centuries were bridged in his unforgettable bringing to fresh, active life every word of the Gospel according to St. Matthew in a landmark production in 1986. <clears throat> now, many artists are well pleased to win a BAFTA Best Actor of the Year award. Mr. Bartworth has won two the first in 1974 and the second in 1977. And in this latter year, he was also honored by the Royal Television Society and Broadcasting Press Guild. Now, it is right that such expertise should be shared. And happily, our graduand returned for some years to the environment of RADA to teach. Clearly, this has given him much pleasure and satisfaction, for he is on record as having said, teaching at RADA is the most important work I have ever done. He delights in the company of the enthusiastic and talented young, brimming with creative energy. He has also found time to put down his ideas on both the philosophy of acting and details of technique of the craft in several very readable books. For someone in a profession which places so many demands on physical and mental and spiritual resources, and ever in the public eye, battery recharging often requires a degree of peace and privacy. And Mr. Barkworth finds great refreshment in walking, in listening to music and looking at paintings. The success of such measures is apparent in the ever fresh, ever professional performer who joins our ranks today. There is perhaps a modicum of self-analysis in his own words about actors. There is no group of people more generous, gossipy, warm-hearted, self-obsessed, affectionate, critical, entertaining, high-spirited, and giving than actors and actresses. And I, for one, he says, I'm glad to be in their ranks, though sometimes it seems like madness. Mr. Chancellor, our graduate on leaving school said that he did not want to go to university. May I say on behalf of us all that we are so glad he has changed his mind today. <laughs> For we enrich our company by adding his name to our roll. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the university, I present to you for the degree of Master of Arts Honoris Causa Peter Wynn Barkworth. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts Honoris Causa. Mr. Chancellor, throughout the world, the quality and the professionalism of the BBC are held in high regard. Of course, much credit is due to the excellence of the presenters, but 
the most expert and prominent presenters are the first to acknowledge that skilled production is the most important ingredient for even the simplest of broadcasts. And we have today, in the person of Gillian Hush, the doyen of this country's radio producers. And it is our good fortune that since 1970, she has been based here in Manchester. As one of our foremost daily broadcasters, herself indeed a household name, puts it, all serious broadcasters call her their favorite producer. And two other distinguished and very discriminating listeners have disclosed quite independently that each used the same technique for the selection of programs which must be listened to, namely to look through the Radio Times and pick out those produced by our graduand knowing that these must be good. Her story starts at Middlesbrough, and after schooling at Middlesbrough High School, Miss Hush came to this university, graduating in the old-fashioned way, a BA with honors. And it seems quite early on that she had decided in a career in journalism, and her baptism of fire was in the newspaper medium notably on the staff of the Evening Gazette in her own hometown. She soon made a mark, and it didn't take long before the BBC at Newcastle persuaded her to work for them. Rapidly, her reputation grew, and responsibility for the production of major series of programmes was put on her willing and most capable shoulders. And when 21 years ago she made her last move within the organization, her arrival here in Manchester was described by a colleague as that of a female bombshell. Her wit, her infectious good humor, and her capacity for repartee changed what before was really a grim time for the region. And things have never looked back. Many of the most famous series of broadcasts our graduate has molded have dealt directly but sensitively with basic likes and dislikes, fears and aspirations of a wide cross-section of our communities. The accuracy and warmth with which listeners recall series done earlier on in career speak of the enduring effect of these works. Classic series include Solomon Grundy, A Word in Edgeways, Conversation Piece, and Desert Island Discs. And a senior academic member of this university recalls a particular program she produced on the subject of Northumberland Pipe music, and he describes it in terms of childlike awe and wonderment. It clearly represents for him a landmark event in his life. Now, daily life in the BBC must be liberally spiced with, by the expected not happening and the unexpected happening, all at a moment's notice. And our graduand is uniquely skilled at measures both to minimize the chances of such occurrences and to deal with them when they do arise. She is unflappable. She is an artist at calming and soothing both the novice and the more experienced but very temperamental and dealing with last minute failures to appear. And such is the regard and affection for her that on one occasion a very well-known broadcaster turned off the oven in the middle of preparing dinner and went along in the tube to Broadcasting House to take part in one of her programs. Now, the number of producers who would ever evoke 
such a response must surely be an odd one, and less than three. Miss Hush has a great love and respect for the spoken word, and also a well-cultivated passion for those words conveyed in song. It has been said that British opera would probably die without her support. <laughs> she travels all round the country to see it and to hear it, and is not neglectful of other musical, visual, and performing arts. It's apparent from what I've already said that our graduate has made countless staunch friends over the years. The priority given to her own family is exemplified by a most endearing habit she developed on the early morning Today program of phoning her father during the five minute thought for the day slot. And I am sure that a succession of religious presenters of this piece will forgive her. Perhaps there is a lesson for us in the university, in our present circumstances, in Miss Hush's entrepreneurial spirit. When BBC Enterprises declined to produce cassettes of her series, Solomon Grundy, she went and produced them herself and sold many hundreds, thus proving their judgment quite wrong. It's unlikely she'll have any difficulty in persuading them to market other series. People compete with one another to pay compliments to our graduate's charm, her humanity, her professionalism, her manner, her support for aspiring broadcasters, her charitable work and many other qualities. Perhaps one final quote may suffice. Whatever the program you're doing, she always makes it fun. Her work has been of a consistently high standard over a long period of time and represents an unsung but marvelous record of creativity in one of the most honorable areas of British culture. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the university, I present to you for the degree of Master of Arts honoris cause, Gillian Hush. Authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts honoris causa. Mr. Chancellor, to carry the responsibility for 370 magistrates with their rich scatter of personalities and idiosyncrasies calls for a blend of wide experience, humanity, and toughness. A keen sense of humor would undoubtedly be an enormous additional asset, and fortunately, our next graduate, Mrs. Aileen Hargreaves, has these requisite qualities. And therefore, when in 1988, the Manchester Magistrates Bench was in need of a new chairman, she was the obvious choice. And what a formidable chairman she proved to be. Like others of our honorary graduates today, she is an artist in the proper and effective use of language. And her powers of oratory have been much lauded. An example, recalled with great clarity by those who were present, is the occasion in which she swayed a meeting of the National Council of the Magistrates Association to embrace the cause of senior attendance centers in this country. Convinced of the value of such centers, 
very shortly after the inception of the one here in Manchester, and at that time, one of only two in the entire country, her conversion of the association led swiftly to the persuasion of a somewhat reluctant Home Office to extend the scheme nationally. Manchester born and bred. Our graduate on leaving school was first employed by the Manchester Education Authority. And she served for a time as bursar of Levenshulme High School. Studying part-time, she graduated BA from this university. During World War II, she served in the Women's Royal Voluntary Service. And shortly end of that conflict, she married. Her long association with the magistrate's bench began, believe it or not, in 1950. And over the intervening years, she has become deeply involved in virtually all aspects of the bench activities, being appointed in turn to the juvenile panel, the Manchester and Salford Probation and Aftercare Committee, the Greater Manchester probation and aftercare committee, and the Manchester City Magistrates Court Committee. And on the national scene, through the Magistrates Association, she has served on their national council, and on bodies concerned with traffic, with training, and with juvenile courts. Perhaps her having been one of the youngest ever appointed to the bench, and her being exposed to the range of human problems while bringing up her own family of three were factors in Mrs. Hargreaves taking a particular, though not an exclusive, interest in matters relating to children in care and in trouble. Such was her close, caring, and informal working relationship with all the staff in the juvenile department that on one occasion, when one of the clerks accidentally dialed her telephone number in the mistaken belief that he had really dialed the number of his mother, our graduate on picking up the phone was greeted by the cheery words, hello mother. She instantly took this as an, albeit tending towards the over familiar expression, of the close junior to senior relationship and proceeded with the conversation in a completely natural and relaxed manner. The reaction of the caller has not been recorded. <laughs> Mrs. Hargreaves' interests pass beyond the confines of the court and its offices. For some time, she has been actively involved with William House, a hostel for ex-offenders, and Church Army Hostel, flats for those with alcohol problems. She's also concerned with Open Door, an interdenominational group providing bedding and clothing for the needy. Her church is an important ingredient in her life, and within that environment, she has taken upon herself special responsibility for the elderly and for the needs of overseas visiting students. For recreation, our graduate enjoys sampling the rich variety of theatrical offerings which this region happily provides, and she is a devoted follower of the Halley. Now, Mrs. Hargreaves has just recently retired from the bench after a long period of tireless, enthusiastic service. Her zeal and interest remain unflagging right to the very end, for Within a few weeks of her due retiral date, she was still attending training courses and asking most of the questions. It is a sad reflection in our society that so much work presents to this part of our legal and judicial system that we need 370 magistrates. All, however, would agree that it is important that the work is undertaken by people of stout but fair and understanding heart. And it is our good fortune that the same society 
which produces those who cause the trouble, also yields those with the necessary complement of high qualities to administer to them. It seems appropriate, therefore, for us to recognize this most distinguished exponent of a vital role in our society. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the university, I present to you for the degree of Master of Arts in Economic and Social Studies, honoris causa, Aileen Hargreaves. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts in Economic and Social Studies, honoris causa. Mr. Chancellor, our next graduand is an innovator par excellence. From an early age, he was to be found taking anything mechanical to bits and putting it together again, usually in a manner which improved its efficiency or usefulness of both. Impatient with school, he left as soon as opportunity presented itself and continued his real education at work and acquiring his paper qualifications on a day release basis. In 1961, Mr. Millward joined the staff of the Department of Physics in this university as a senior experimental officer. And during the six years he served in this capacity, he made a tremendous impact on the workings of that department. He arrived at a time when transistors began to supplant vacuum tubes as the active components in electrical circuits, and this gave full rein to his creative skills. He rapidly acquired a remarkable talent for designing logic circuits of the types which were the forerunners of many of today's intelligent electronic devices. But not only did our graduates make the wheels of the department run more smoothly, he also prolonged the life of the wheels belonging to most individuals in the department and associated ones. His clinic for ailing cars was so popular and his results so good that his efforts were blamed for a temporary slump in new car sales throughout the district. During his years at the university, he also acquired a reputation for indulging in practical jokes. And if something odd was seen to happen, responsibility was readily and often correctly attributed to him. One particularly mischievous example is the alleged substitution of a colleague's payslip by a false but initially convincing letter from the busser to the effect that, regrettably, he had no funds to pay the individual concerned. No doubt appropriate retribution was meted out. In 1967, our graduate left the university to join a large American electronics company, Victorine Inc., taking on responsibility for sorting out hardware problems with products sold throughout Europe. Two years later, he transferred to AEP International Limited, an even larger agency in Europe, for a range of North American electronics firms. By 1972, he was more than ready to set up his own company, Link Systems Limited, and as could have been predicted, this became an outstanding success. With all the hallmarks of the best in British business, good employment, large turnover, and about 50% of the income arising from exports. 
So successful was the company that in due course in, in 1979, it became part of the United Engineering Industries. Mr. Millward becoming a director and remaining chairman of Link Systems. More recently, he has shed these responsibilities and become involved with other dynamic electronics companies. Busy though he has been, he has found time to give his expertise to the design and construction of an impressive and popular museum portraying in a most attractive manner an important era in the history of York. His patronage has also extended to this university in the form of substantial donations, principally aimed at supporting research in experimental nuclear physics. Significantly, the funds have supported people with ideas and further training of appropriate individuals rather than solely the purchase of pieces of equipment and other material items. There can surely be no better way of furthering the cause of a major science department in the university than helping it to turn out scientific and technical innovators who can create wealth and employment in this country. Not surprisingly, our graduates' recreational interests centre also on things mechanical. He has great admiration for the blend of art and craft which may be displayed by the skillful driver of a finely tuned racing car, for example, at, at Brands Hatch. He himself has built up a most splendid collection of truly classic specialist automobiles, which could be relied on always to bring out the undisguised small boy lurking within even the most undemonstrative, sober, fully grown man. Of course, many people contribute and have contributed to the life and work of this university. Few, however, have contributed in so many ways, by working on its staff, by pleading its cause abroad, by direct and generous donation, by example, by encouragement, and by leadership. The development of people so that they can exploit their skills in the outside world is the dominant way universities of today justify themselves to those who would ask for material benefit to society from university work. Mr. Millward, by exemplifying that way, does credit to our university. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the university, I present to you for the degree of Master of Science, honoris causa, John Peter Millward. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Science, honoris causa. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Anthony John Balance. Congratulations. Humberto Fernando Bullen. Congratulations. Man Siop Park. Jonathan Stewart Seaton. 
Congratulations. Timothy John Stringer. Congratulations. Susan Christine Webb. Francis Julie Woolmer. Sarah Louise Woods. And for the degree of Master of Arts in Economic and Social Studies, Carl Richard William Livingston. Syed Yassin Ahmed. Congratulations. John Michael Barron. Congratulations. Christos Christophides. Congratulations. Lakshmi Kumari Gunatalake. Santino Loro Miliano Lado. Alexis Christina McKenzie. Philippa Jane Sherrington. Congratulations. Jane Ann Spellman. Dushni Nilika Wirakun. Congratulations. Aurang Zeb Zia. And for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Economic and Social Studies with Honours, Maud Ali Ahmad Razi. Congratulations. Becky Pick Yi Chan. Congratulations. Shona Glover. Congratulations. Dominic James Harrington. Congratulations. Reno Sionades. Congratulations. Dominic Kwame Adu. Congratulations. Lucy Catherine Holland Agnew. Congratulations. Andreas George Anastadis. Congratulations. Richard Jonathan Anderson. Congratulations. Vasim Arfan. Congratulations. Anastasios Nikos Athanasides. Congratulations. Melinda Athenoduru. Congratulations. Justin Piers Bacon. Congratulations. Oliver Duncan Beckett. Congratulations. Samantha Jane Blake. Congratulations. Simon Kevin Blakebra. Congratulations. Julia Blackstad. Jane Michelle Borland. 
Congratulations. Giles Bridge. Congratulations. Nathan Stewart Syndicum Brown. Congratulations. Thank you. Bhavesh Chandi. Congratulations. David Leslie Kaufman. Well done. Clive William Collins. Gregory Richard Cripps. Andrea Lee Daniels. Anthony Philip Davis. Timothy Peter Davison. Mark David Dixon. Congratulations. Mary Elizabeth DeVito. Congratulations. Brian Adrian Eddery. Congratulations. Tania Ronit Elfasi. Michael Thomas Anthony Fagan. Paul Charles Flom. Richard Stewart Clement Francis. Colin Andrew Freeman. Congratulations. Louise Ann Gallagher. Hello. Michael John Gerard. Monica Ursula Golia. Congratulations. Susan Ann Goodwin. Tamara Rose Gordon. Simon Gupta. Darren Glenn Hale. William Benjamin Hancock. Congratulations. Thomas Eric Hargreaves. Rachel Andre Harold. Congratulations. Michael Chang Helfgott. Anne Helen Hobdell. Richard George Hodgson. Richard William Hollins. Lisa Ann Hollyhead. Helen Jessica Howard. Deborah Louise Hume. Thank you. Myra Hosseini. Michael Henry Jacobs. Thank you. 
Jonathan Jacobson. Justine Amanda Jones. Isabel Ann Kendrew. Douglas Alexander Killen. Andrew Killingback. Thea Kilov. Alexander Richard Crickler. John Kojo Adam Adamako. Well Louise Simone Allen. Alexander Craig Altman. Antonis Apostolou. Catherine Rachel Armstrong. James Edward Arnott. Jason Patrick Ashford. Roderick William Baker. Rachel Ann Barbie. Keith Bentley. Nicholas Bergman. Hold on. Elizabeth Jane Billum. Oh, oh. Michelle Samantha Bollum. Richard Edward Boyce. Jonathan Gavin Boyle. Congratulations. Colin Michael Brett. Congratulations. Russell Gavin Burns. Congratulations. John Hooper Cadman. Wan Kit Chong. Suk Quen Chung. Alison Clark. Shane Coulson. Martin Douglas Coulthard. Charles Alistair Vaudry Coutts. Philip John Crossman. Fergus Gerard Daly. Michael Dalton. Andrew Richard De Santos. Robert William Devney. 
Declaration. Daniel Thomas Dixon. Sharon Dowdswell. Congratulations. Alistair Paul Driver. Samantha Jane Drury. Lisa Maria Edgar. Congratulations. Edward Angus Fryer. Congratulations. Corin Gibbon. Craig Robert Gould. Faridanim Hamdan. Paul Andrew Hampson. Christina Ann Haslam. Charles Douglas Henry. Timothy Vaughan Hilton. Simon Mark Hummel. Peter Charles Hunt. Robert William Jarman. Ashish Vallabhats Jethwa. Justine Beverly Jones. Justina Terena Kamara. Audrey Ann Kelly. David Hugh Kerr. Duncan Alexander Kerr. Matthew David Kerr. David John Kinman. Christodoulos Christodoulakis. Paul Gardner. Andrew John Harper. Divine Andrew Harrison. Lick on. And for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Economic and Social Studies, Stuart Kenton Giles. Juan Ching Ko. Lisa Maria Kinsella. And for the degree of Bachelor of Social Science with Honours in Social Anthropology, Nigel James Murray Ritchie. Congratulations. Thank you. Christopher James Baird. Thank you. Alice Milaka Lucy Berry. 
Right. Matthew William James Jefferson. Donald Bruce Murdoch. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thomas Richard Lansley Stordy. Congratulations. And for the degree of Bachelor of Social Science with honours in social policy, Claire Helen Burtonshaw. Gail Deborah Fisher. Yvonne Greenwood. Margaret Joyce Varley. Jacqueline Watson. Claire Elizabeth Cinder. Adele Coulthard. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for the degree of Bachelor of Social Science with honours in Sociology, Thomas Douglas Coburn. Jennifer Elaine Adams. John Philip Hodgins. Congratulations, sir. Emma Louise Regan. Congratulations. Maxine Shorey. Congratulations. Haley Jane Grundy. Congratulations. Rachel Elizabeth Gunn. Congratulations. Fiona Jane Linnett. Congratulations. Salva City Universitas Nostro Mancuniensis, Hoc Precancis Consugamus. I'm very pleased to be able to offer my sincere personal congratulations on your graduation from the University of Manchester. In a way, I envy you having a permanent record of the ceremony. In my own case, I graduated from the University of Manchester over 25 years ago. And my only souvenir is a rather faded photograph of a remarkably young man in a gown and a hood. As you know, Getting a degree from the University of Manchester is no easy task. Indeed, getting into the university in the first place is no easy task. We have over 40,000 applications for 3,000 places. We intend, of course, to take more students than that in the future, and we intend to maintain the reputation of the university in research and teaching by finding financial support from industry and commerce as well as from the government. We believe we have to do this in order to maintain in the future our high academic standing in teaching and in research. I should like to draw your attention to the alumni office. We are very keen on keeping in touch with all our graduates no matter where they are in the world and we have a number of associations 
in foreign countries as well as in this country. In a sense, being a Manchester graduate is being part of a large international family. And you are very welcome as a member of it. We will send you once a year a copy of our alumni magazine, The Manchester Graduate. That is our way of keeping in touch with you. But we want you to keep in touch with us also. And you'll be very welcome at this university any time that you're in Manchester. I hope that you will have and retain fond memories of your time here. Those of us left behind will strive to maintain the high reputation of the University of Manchester in the future. A Manchester degree will always be worth having. And as a Manchester graduate, you are linked by ties of history to all those Manchester graduates who have gone before. Some of them very distinguished in their careers, in science and arts, in the public service, in industry and in commerce. Let me say once again how much I value being able to offer you my congratulations and I wish you very well for the future.